field. Things gonna change when I really hit the field. Undefeated chance, man, you know what's the deal. Trying to find a kid, I'm in a field doing drills. Boy, you just a sucker, you ain't never keep it real. Three rings in my hand, I'm a warrior to the max. When I hang it up, they gon' have to give me plaques. Step up in the building and I only bring the facts. When I make a highlight, they gon' be playing running back, okay? Always locked in, now I got time to lack. Saying he the best, he could take a lap. Batted 1,000 when you check the stats. Boy, is you ready? You ain't gotta ask. I just really hit the bell. 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 Boy, I'm about to hit the bell. And welcome to another episode of the Hitting the Field podcast. It is your host, Jeremy Brenner, and it has been a very long morning. It has been a very long morning already. It's about 11 18 here in beautiful Orlando, Florida at the Nicholson School of Communication and Media on the campus of the University of Central Florida. Go Knights. Charge on. Y'all, I got two guests in the panel in the studio right now, and they just gave me the craziest look right now. It's absolutely priceless, these reactions, but <laughs> I'm here to introduce them. Uh, we got on my far left... Mr. Johnny Jackson himself. Johnny Jackson, what's going on, my friend? Uh, I am currently a recovering Dodgers fan. Yes, and we also have another recovering Dodgers fan right next to you, Miss Kayla Burge. Kayla, welcome to the podcast. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, so this is, Kayla's, this is Kayla's first appearance on anything HTF, so I want you to take the mic Put it close to your mouth and tell tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself. Um, first of all, I'm very nervous. This is my first ever recording of myself, so let's see how my voice sounds. Um, well, I'm a sophomore here at UCF. I'm from Broward County. Um, big Dodgers fan, big baseball fan in general. And in the future, I'd hope to be in sports broadcast or just sports media in general. So Broward County... How Broward. You, Broward County. Yes. I, I don't know the. I'm from. I'm from Houston. I really don't know the <laughs> difference. I'm not a Florida person. How did you become a Dodgers fan? You're, you're from Florida. How how does that translate yeah, to the Dodgers? I grew up a Marlins fan. You know, my mom's big Marlins fan, but my grandma um, was always a Dodgers fan too. So I was kind of both. And then you know, just more recent years, I just kind of like grown more attached to the Dodgers. Well, than... my condolences to you both. Yeah. I so. Mean... Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm re- we're really trying. It's just you know they can't get past the postseason playoffs. They just they get there and then it's like oh I don't know how to play baseball anymore. It's, just, sometimes that happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you know it happens to someone. Uh, but what I want to so we're here to talk NLCS, ALCS, what's to come of the ALCS, and potential World Series matchup. We got. A lot to go on. It is oct- It is the middle of October. It is the perfect time uh, for baseball. And I just want to recap what happened last night. So, Game 4, NLCS. That's where we're starting today. The Nationals made it to their first World Series in franchise history. We are sitting here on October 16th, 2019. In this timeline... The Bryce Harper list nationals are in the World Series. Is this is this real life right now, Johnny Jackson? It is, is real this real life. life? It is real life, and I feel like I've heard more about Bryce Harper not being on the Nationals than I've heard about Gleyber Torres being 22 years old. Yeah, and because uh, Bryce Harper makes your team better, and I believe that Bryce Harper is a better player than Adam Eaton. So if Bryce Harper was on this team, then they would probably be doing better than they are, but he's not. And they're still making it to the World Series, and that's really good. I mean, better – how can you be better than sweeping in the NLCS know, and yeah. going to the World Series? They, they would have swept it in three games instead. In three games? Yeah. Uh, they would have just said, we don't want to show up for game four? I don't up, know. Yeah. Bryce Harper had some years with the Nationals, and then all of a sudden when he leaves the first year, they make it all the way to the World Series. I don't think that's like much of a coincidence. Well, you know what he said at the beginning of the season, right? He wants to bring, bring a title, a back, title to back to D.C. And he might just be doing that. Yeah. Um, they also have Patrick Corbin, who's just been outstanding for them the entire season. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
Patrick Corbin started the game last night uh, very strong uh, and didn't give up. You know, he had the run support though early. And it, it's funny just kind of how it all started. You know, the Cardinals got to this point. They're their last one of the season, putting up 10 runs in the first. And then their final game of the season, they give oh, up seven yeah. in the first. That was sad to watch. I was embarrassed for them, like secondhand embarrassment. Because especially the pop fly, I forget who who hit it, but it was a pop fly to left field. And they all looked at it like it was like, oh, where is it going? And then they just dropped it. An easy catch that they just completely, completely dropped. I think it was a bit of poetic justice for my boy Ronald Acuna Jr. I mean, <laughs> I, I love me some Acuna. I love Acuna. Yeah. It was just nice to see the Cardinals go down. You know, as someone who grew up despising the Cardinals, I wasn't necessarily disappointed. Although, I will say this. Back in March, I did predict a Cardinals-Astros World Series, and that prediction failed last night. It took until October 15th for that prediction to fall through. I'm pretty impressed with that. You still might are probably going to get half of that prediction correct. I mean, that that's a whole other story. But I want to foc- I want to bring this focus back to the Nationals here. So, the Nationals... So, I want to ask you guys both as Dodgers fans. Is there any consolation that the Dodgers lost to the Nationals because the Nationals simply feel like a team of destiny at this point? I mean, I know that's... A term that's easily flailed around, but look at the Nationals and where they were. So Bryce Harper leaves the team. They don't have much expectations this year. Maybe that helps them. Maybe it doesn't. But that's a story for a different day. The Nationals get to the postseason as a wild card. Uh, I believe it's the first wild card to make it to the World Series since the Royals did it in 2014. And the, and the Giants. Both those teams are wild card Yeah, teams. so it's the first time since 2014 that a wild card will be in the World Series. Um, so they're a wild card team. They face the Dodge. They they go in the wild card game. They're down 3-1 to one in the eighth inning with two outs. And Juan Soto saves the day. And that that team is saved from that game. They go into the Dodgers. They're down two to one. They come back to win game four, down two runs in the eighth. They win it there as well in Los Angeles, and they haven't lost since game three of the of the NLDS. The team's on a six game winning streak. So, as Dodgers fans, does does that any kind of consolation? You know, this team did end your season, but maybe because they're the hottest team right now. Yeah, I think like. They've just reached the peak of their season. Like they just started. Like they they're working together. They're one like completely gelled team. And it's like once they get to that point, it's kind of like you're, they're unstoppable. You know. So I yeah. said uh, about ten minutes after game five ended, I texted my friends in the my, like Twitter group chat. I was like, the only way I won't be as sad about this is if the Nationals win everything. Yeah. I mean, every they haven't won everything yet. They still have one <clears throat> mammoth World Series to go. Yeah. This is going to be a good World Series. It's going to be, yeah. It's going to be tense. I mean, I, I'm going to... So, like, what about this Nationals team, though, is... the Like, if you had to attribute one reason as to why the Nationals are where they are right now, what is that reason? Uh, they're the weak link in their pitching rotation almost threw a no-hitter in game one of the NLCS. Yeah, I was going to say, it's definitely their pitching. I mean, they have Strasburg. Like, they, they just have, I don't Strasburg, know. Strasburg, Scherzer, Scherzer. Yeah, Corbin, yeah, yeah. Corbin, Sanchez. There really isn't a weak link in that rotation. You are right about that. Um, but it, but also, I think that their their lineup, one through nine, has also really stepped up lately. Oh, yeah. Howie Kendrick, former Dodger, looks really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, he looks really good. Uh, your Michael A. Taylor also has Rodney. some pop. Uh, yeah, everyone, everyone, it seems like everything is just coming together for them at the right time. And it's nice to see that, especially with the Nationals, a team that, you know, has been there so many times and has fallen short. And, you know, I think that teams need to fall down and get back up in order to make it to where they need to go. And yeah. that that's just how the MLB is uh, broken down. The today Today's MLB. You look at the Astros. The Astros made it to the postseason 2015. 
could have won the series. They were they were winning game four up two to one, and they lost that series to the eventual World Series champion Royals. They come back two years later, win the World Series. Red Sox last year lost in the division series to the eventual champion Astros. Then they go and uh, win it all in 2018. So I think that, you know, falling down and getting back up is part of the growth of a champion in today's league. Would you guys agree with that statement? I definitely agree with that. I mean, you know, like, it kind of gives them more of a motivation, you know, to do better is when they, like, they're losing, they have a losing streak, but then they pick themselves back up again. They start working as a team better, you know, and it's just kind of like they get that second wind almost and just, like, kill it in the postseason. I think a lot of people, like me included, kind of penciled in the Dodgers to either make it to the World Series or win the World Series. And I think the shock of just losing in the first round is really going to turn some heads, maybe even in the Dodgers organization as to what they need to do. Yeah. For sure. And I think that the Nationals here, they they have the tools to get to the World Series. But do they have the tools to win the World Series? That's the big yeah, question. Yeah, that's here. the tricky part cuz you know you have the Nationals they did great, you know, slept through that whole series, but at the same time they're going up against two just top-notch teams, the Yankees and the Astros and I don't know, the Yankees are pretty hungry for it this year, but at the same time it's like I don't know. Even if the Astros get it, it's just it's tricky. It's tricky. Johnny, do 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 the Nat do the Nationals have a chance in the World Series? A hundred percent. Their pitching will keep them in ball games, and good pitching beats good hitting nine times out of ten. And if their pitchers give up consistently two or three runs or less a game, they're not out of any game. They, and then one getting you saw in the wild card game, they're down three to one. One good inning is all you really need to take it back. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like. If the Astros, it's it's Nationals versus Astros, it's just going to be like a pitching battle, like best pitching yeah. for the win. So game one of the World Series, I believe is Tuesday next week, the Nationals are have six off days. With a team riding so much momentum, does this time off hurt them in any way, would you say? I don't know necessarily. I think it. I think it might help them, honestly, because like – they not, they're not injured. Yeah, but it's, it's like if, I mean, you know, playing 162 games plus, how, plus however many games they've played in these playoffs, they might have a couple, like, nagging injuries, like neck t- tightness. That, that helps the, like, their players get over that a little bit. Helps their bullpen get fresh because, as you know, those guys will be pitching every day, like uh, Garrett Hudson. or Garrett, Daniel Hudson. Dan, Daniel Hudson. New, new dad Daniel Hudson. New dad yeah. Daniel Hudson. Yeah, not my dad, but a dad. <laughs> also, everyone who's talking about Daniel Hudson taking off for the birth of his child, back off. That used to be a really big deal, though, that people would ever do consider that. And it's and it's a sign of the times that, um, you know, like, I think, I think most people now, like, there's a huge scandal back in the 90s. Um, there's this documentary about it that I've watched. It's really good. It's a Houston Oilers player who took time off uh to get the birth of his i think i think their child was born on a saturday and then they were playing sunday in new england but he was in houston for the birth and he decided to stay home and that created a, a huge controversy so much so that i believe president bush papa bush at the time uh you know said something made a comment about it like that's how big this thing was so you know i think if you look at, I mean, clearly now, I mean, I don't think it matters. I mean, you, look, you won in four games. You won, you won game one anyway. Sean Doolittle is a very, uh, very good one B in that in that bullpen, and I, he, you know, he did the job just fine. And Anibal Sanchez could have gone nine innings as well. Like that, that whole thing. I think it's, it look, it, it's, it's to remember the fact that it used to be a very big deal. But I also think that, you know. At the end of the day, you got to do what's best for you. And look, there would be a lot more controversy surrounded by it if the Nationals blew a save in that game. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I still think that Daniel Hudson made the right choice and, you know, did what he did was best for himself. I don't like, but what do you think the reaction would have been had he decided, you know what, I'm going to play instead of go to the birth of my child? Pull an Adam Gase. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't think anybody faults him either way. I feel yeah. it, but I feel like it's 
I mean, obviously, I don't have children, so I can't speak. You don't? No. Okay. Just wanted to know. Yeah. At least that you know of. <laughs> I, 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 if, I, if I have a child somewhere, I'm, I'm sorry that I don't know I'm about sorry. you. <laughs> well, I have some news for you. Really? Yes. Am I going to be a dad? Not, not anytime soon. Oh, <laughs> I think you got some time. <laughs> not old. if you don't want them. <laughs> not right now. I do not have the money. Okay. I had to think twice about buying like one of those dollar fifty nine like twelve ramen packs the other day. So oh, yeah. There's no way not I can afford a child. We, can, we can't afford a child. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's steer this back yeah, in the back right to, direction. <laughs> back to um, baseball. Back to baseball. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, you know, Daniel Hudson is going to be a force in the series. You know, he's got a new baby. He has a week to hang out with the baby now. And then prepare for that World Series. He's got dad strength. He's going to have dad, yeah. strength. dad strength. He already throws 100. And maybe he comes out, World Series game one, throwing like 117 miles an hour. 117 yeah. miles per hour. That, that, is, that is a lot. Yeah. I yeah. think it could go either way. Like the six days of rest or whatever. Like, you know, they could either come back strong because they've had all that time, you know, like to rest, like rejuvenate. Or they could like kind of lose that momentum and come out rusty in the beginning. Well, that's something that we've seen in the ALCS that I think that has created an impact. You look at you look at uh, the Yankees. They swept the Twins. They had almost a week off. They had I think they won the series on Monday and then didn't play until Saturday. Meanwhile, the Astros they went five games against the Rays. They only had one day in between series. So, and, but and that altered maybe Game One because the rotation. But I think you look now. The Astros have taken Games Two and Three, and they. Because I think in part because of how their rotation was set up, because of how the ALDS came out, where Garrett Cole had to pitch game five, where Justin Verlander had to pitch game four, and you forced them to move further back into the rotation for the ALCS, moving Granky up to game one. So I want to get y'all's thoughts about the first three games of the ALCS, more notably la- yesterday afternoon's. Uh, Astros game. Astros won four to one yesterday in Yankee Stadium, and Altuve hit a home run in the first inning. Josh Reddick a homer in the second inning. And the Astros tacked on two runs in the, I believe, seventh inning. Because Gary Sanchez just might be one Gary of the worst Sanchez passed in ball, um, ended up scoring a run, and you know the Yankees tacked on one run late, but it was three runs. Glaber hit the home run few. off of Joe yeah. Smith, right? Glaber hit the home run off of Joe Smith. Glaber Torres had a great series. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, He's like, it's insane. He got, what, was it five, five RBIs? Five RBIs in yeah. game one. Um, five of the seven RBIs for the team in game one. And then had a homer last night. Um, something that I found really interesting about yesterday's game was how the Yankees changed their lineup. So in games one and two in Houston, Glaber Torres batted third behind Aaron Judge. And then... Edwin Encarnacion batted fourth, and Brett Gardner batted fifth. Encarnacion and Gardner had poor hitting performances in game two. But in game three, Glaber and Gardner switched spots, moving Gardner up to the three spot and Torres down to the five spot. That decision confused me. And I want to know what you guys think about that. And if that, you know, maybe there's... Maybe your baseball minds are a little brighter than mine and you have a better explanation for it. But why do you think uh, Aaron Boone made that choice to swap them to? I don't know, because at least when you're thinking about it, you want your best hitters to get the most of bats, which is why like Mike Trout, a.k.a. Baseball Jesus, bats second for the Angels all year. So Mm -hmm. my only thing is because batting him third gives him a guarantee to bat in the first inning. It gives you a chance to ambush him like Tommy Pham did against Verlander in the game four. Mm-hmm. But maybe you're trying to hope that he gets on with more traffic yeah. on the bases. Or maybe it was like, you know, they just kind of want to like put him more towards the end to have that like saving grace, you know, like if, cause they did lose, you yeah. know, game two. So it's like, maybe put him, put him towards the end. Maybe he'll do something great for us. And he ended up doing that. And I think that that was part of the reason why is you wanted a little more pop in the middle of your lineup rather than just stockpile your top. But Something that the Yankees could have used last night was a runner on base when uh, when Glaber hit that home run. Yeah. And Edwin Encarnacion has not your answer if you want someone on base. I think he had uh, one hit yesterday, but it was the first hit for him in the series. And he's been really cold. And I don't know if that configuration of the Yankees lineup was the right 
winning combination for them. Yeah. They also ended up moving the back half of their lineup a little bit. Um, they inserted Aaron Hicks in at the nine spot, which I think was a good move. Aaron Hicks got on base twice yesterday with walks. That's something the Yankees did a good job with yesterday, is they were able to work Garrett Cole and make him work for out. Did he have five walks yeah. yesterday? Five walks is a career high for Garrett Cole, um, most since June 2018. Hmm. But How many strikeouts did he have yesterday? Didn't he only have like five or six? It was, it was not... Not Garrett definitely Cole, not like. his career high. Definitely not to what we saw in the in the division series. I mean, he's like easily one of like the best pitcher easily um, in the MLB right now. But at the same time, it's like you have the Yankees who are just a hitting powerhouse, so it's kind of like competing at the same level. And I mean, it was good pitching versus good hitting. Exactly. And at the end of the day, good, good pitching, pitching won. Yes. Good hitting. And you know, I'll say this: Garrett Cole. People are going to criticize him today. People are going to say this about him today. They're going to they're going to say a whole bunch of things. But guess what? Zero runs. Zero runs and a W at the end. Seven innings of z- no-run baseball. Mm-hmm. Like, that's yeah. just and in, in Against the Yankees in Game 3 of the championship series? At Yankee Stadium. You can't really ask for much more than no, that. In can't. the band box. Yeah. The craziest thing about Garrett Cole is that he is a free agent at the end of the season. He is yeah. making... He's probably made about 70 to $100 million in the postseason. I really, truly believe that. He has really made some money. Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's, it's crazy how much money he's made. Like, in you know the how, like, Joe starts. Kelly had, like, the World Series tax when he signed with the Dodgers? Mm-hmm. Garrett Cole's going to get, like, the entire playoff. When was the last time they lost to Garrett Cole start? Wasn't it, like, in May? It's been a while. It was, like, in May. And in this streak that, you know, the Astros have not lost Garrett Cole starts, he really doesn't give up. And, th- and that's part of the reason why I think the Yankees didn't score. Garrett Cole doesn't give up runs often, but when he does, it's usually a long ball. It's usually a home run. I believe in um, what was it in game in game five of the division series to give up a run. I think I think he gave like one. Home he run. gave up a home run to Eric Sogard. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like it's those it's like small things, and he doesn't he doesn't give up runs when there are runners on base, and that that's the huge part about why Garrett Cole has been so successful is because yeah. he. He pitches well when it counts the most, I feel. And it counts the most in October, and it counts the most when runners on base, and he is fanning those hitters. And look, the Astros got the 2-1 advantage yesterday, and I think that, I think Game 3 was huge. Bigger than any game in the series so far, and possibly bigger than any game outside of maybe any clincher games left. I think... I personally, I think game three was sort of like the Astros game five. Yeah, because as soon as they won that game, then that means the series has to go back to Houston. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, or, I mean, it doesn't have to if no. the Astros want to close it out <laughs> in New York, but uh, very unlikely given yeah. how well the Yankees have played at home and just the law of averages. I think this series is bound to go six or seven. Yeah. Um, Especially but, with the yeah. possible rain delay today or. Yeah, so that's that. I'm glad you brought that up, Kayla, because that is exactly <laughs> what I want to talk to you about next. So, projected rain in New York today. It is supposed to start raining in the middle of the afternoon, and they're projecting enough rain to the point where they are considering calling this game off and moving it to tomorrow. And that usually isn't that big of a deal in the middle of the season, but when it is October and playoff are in play and rotations are set, it definitely changes things a little bit. So that's, I want, I want to discuss how a possible rain delay can affect how this series plays out. Kayla, what do you think? It's, I mean, it could really, especially when this is a pitching battle on the end of the day, you know, like if it gets delayed today and it goes to tomorrow, whatever, that means Game 5 will be played at Yankee Stadium, meaning Verlander will play at Yankee Stadium, which could be a just, it could be, you know, like, it's it's not, it's Yankees' home advantage, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't know. I it mean, I go. trust, I trust, I, I do trust Garrett Cole in, um, in the Bronx. I trust Garrett Cole anywhere. Justin Verlander, yeah. I, you know, I, I trust him. And I and I honestly, other than Garrett Cole, wouldn't want anyone else pitching. But of course, we but. saw we saw in Game Four, Johnny Jackson and I were eyewitnesses 
That um, game was electric. <laughs> it was a f- lot of fun. It's one of the most fun I've had in a baseball stadium in a long time. I was just really happy about the towels. Like, Jeremy can tell you. I yeah. was. I still have that time. towel in my car. The whole time I was like, I want a towel. I want a towel yeah. so bad. Oh, and they gave us one. And I Did you not have a towel? Girl. Oh, I, oh I you got one. Towel. Oh, at the, at the beginning of the game. It was so fun. Yeah. We could, that, that's a story for another day. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so you, you do bring that up yeah. with Verlander, possibly. Because after... You know, technically, I guess Verlander is scheduled to pitch. Yeah, I mean, just... coming up. But Johnny, what? How, how do you think? Like, do you think that? What is? Who does this rain delay affect the most? Does it affect the Astros more? Or does it affect the Yankees more? And who does it? Who benefits the most from this potential rain delay? I feel the like the, the, Yankees? Y- the Yankees benefit more because they have a shallower pitching rotation. I feel like because they have Paxton. Tanaka, who's both of them have been pretty good this this series, mm-hmm. and then Severino, who got shelled last night. Who's their number four? Hap. I would say I think I think we'll see a start from Chad Green, Chad an Green. opener. Yeah. Chris Tran hates the openers, but I think I that love the Yankees. The opener. I think the Yankees are going because look, the other than other than Tanaka, the one pitcher that the Astros have not been able to figure out or get anything off of is Chad Green. He's pitched in. I want to say. Uh, every game this series, and the Astros have not been able to get much out of him. And I would expect Chad Green to start one game in this series or open one game in this series. And I think what we saw last night, so Chad Green came on in the fifth inning in a crucial part of the game. There were runners on, um, and Chad Green got the last two outs in the fifth inning. And we didn't see him after that, which was kind of strange to me because you would think Chad, because Chad Green is built to go more than two outs usually, but I think that was a sign of oh, we're probably going to see him more tomorrow, and I think that's why he ended up not pitching as much yesterday because of what we might see in the future. But if there is no game today, yeah, that's why I think it just could really. I, I definitely agree that it will go in favor of the Yankees though that they will end up <coughs> having the bigger advantage. If they do have that rain delay, and everything gets pushed back a day. And if the game gets rained out, that means Paxton is on four days of rest normally for game four, right? Well, no. So so the idea is Tanaka and Granke, according to rest, would be four days rest or the normal amount of rest yeah. or whatever mm-hmm. on Thursday. Thursday is supposed to be game five. However, this rain delay could turn Thursday's game into game four. And game five would be the the makeup game, I guess you could call it yeah. that. But um, I still throw Verlander out there over Granky. Well, here's here's the thing though: the Astros have look in game four. It's clear that the Yankees need game four more than the Astros do. They need to get a second win. Astros got that last night. Look, if if game four is today, then I believe that. You will see Chad Green for the Yankees and Jose Arquiti for the Astros, the person who's, you know, planning on like the Astros presumed fourth starter, the opener, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it sounds from what the MLB sounds like, it sounds like they've planned this multiple days in advance so much. So they are they know there's going to be rain today. And I and it's hard for players to like, how does this affect the players in this whole thing, they're like they, I'm, you know, they have to go through the the motions as if the game was of playing yeah. today. And the Astros, they play in, um, a dome. they play not in a, not dome, a dome, but a, a retractable roof yeah. stadium, so they don't get any games rained out in Houston. I think this season they might have had one rain out, and it was in Chicago uh, against the White Sox. So they're not usually used to that, but I'm sure that the Yankees are. They've played probably more games. Uh, more double headers or you know rain delays and you know Aaron Boone has had to manage more rain delays than AJ Hinch has how does that you know does that help the Yankees or is it just kind of like a hey it's baseball at the end of the day we're so I mean it's not like a double header is being played yeah. so you know how does this affect the series in itself I think it helps the Yankees a lot more because they've used their bullpen a lot more and an extra day of rest for that bullpen is going to be very scary for those Astros hitters I agree, but I also think it could just be, you know, like, it's baseball, you know. 
At the same time, though, the Astros, kind of, Astros have kind of been kind of spoiled in that sense that they have the retractable roof. They don't really have to deal with rainouts. But um, so the Yankees kind of know what they're doing. So it could be it could be something you know that helps them in the end, or it could be something that's just like you know it's another day of baseball. It got rained out. Yeah. So something I want to bring up for the Astros and Kaylee kind of brought it up earlier. So if they do get rained out today, that would move Granky to the game four start hypothetically. And it would hypothetically also move Justin Verlander to a game five start. I don't actually agree with that. And I'm going to tell you why. So Justin Verlander has played in three games in this playoff so far. Uh, a very good uh, game one against the Rays and a very good game two against the Yankees. The one start he did not play well was game four against the Rays. One, it was on the road. Two, it was on one day less rest. And if he were to pitch in game five, that would mean he's pitching on the road with one day less rest. Now, granted, whoever the Yankees pitch will also be on one day less rest if it is Paxton, if it is, you know, whoever. But also, you have to keep in mind, someone, the, the bullpen is going to have to start a game or someone outside of Granky Cole and Verlander is going to have to start one game in this series. And if I were AJ Hinch, if I were if I had the manager hat on, I don't care about any sort of rain delay. I am sticking to the plan, and here's why: you have a two-one lead. You're ge- the worst case scenario. You're you lose the next two, and you have two games in Houston, and but you also have game two games in Houston where you have Justin Verlander and Garrett Cole pitching Saturday and Sunday. You don't lose anything. I mean, look, yes, you want... I think, look, A.J. Hinch is trying to win games four and five, yeah. as anyone should. Obviously. But also, you got to keep in mind, the, this Yankees team is a really good team, and they might beat you, regardless. Yes. So, and also, if you go into game... So, if I were A.J. Hinch, well, this is what I would do. If game four is tomorrow, even if they pitch Tanaka, I still pitch Urquidy. And even if, you know, the Yankees rock or Keedy, they, you know, and, and Tanaka, you know, just completely blanks the Astros, you lose game four. Well, you have Granke in game five, you have, Cole in, you have Verlander in game six, and you have Garrett Cole in the game seven. You also give Granke one day more of rest, you keep Justin Verlander on the same amount of rest, and you keep Garrett Cole in the same amount of rest. Because if they decide to just stick with the rotation and go with their three guys, you have... Um, you have Granky in game four, Verlander in game five on one day less rest, and you have Garrett Cole in game six on one day less rest. And then you have to pitch your Keedy in game seven. And then you pitch your Keedy or whoever in game seven. Would you rather pitch your bullpen in game four with a 2-1 lead or pitch a bullpen in a must-win game seven with your season on the line? To me, and then, and basically, if you go to Game Seven, you don't have Garrett Cole because he pitched probably <laughs> the day before, the day before, and probably pitched seven or eight innings. Verlander's probably out too because he's on one day rest and probably didn't, you know, probably pitched a lot as well. I mean, look, if you win the series in six or less, if you win in the series in five or six, then it doesn't <laughs> matter. But I think in this series, you have to plan to go seven, not hope to go seven but you have to plan for the absolute worst because then if they went in six then cole's prime and ready to go for game one of the world series i just think i mean it's risky all the way around though like you know like waiting like just assuming that it'll work out if you do it that way it's a it's risky i mean it's all about risk in the end but it's still like it could go you know both ways so i think he has a the manager has like a hard job just yeah managers in make their money in october yeah and (laughs) i think you know, but I think that this rain delay does bring a lot of risk. And because and, the thing is, you have to pitch your bullpen at some point. And I don't necessarily know if you want to uh, beat to the Yankees drum, because I think the thing is, if if the if the game four is played on Thursday, I think you have to assume the, Na- the Yankees pitch Tanaka on Thursday, regardless of whether it's game four or game five, and regardless of if they have a 2-2 tie or a 3-1 lead or a down 2-1, yeah, I mean, they're, they're or they, they need to win game four. They need to win on Thursday, yeah. whether it's game four or game five. They need to they need to do the best they can they, to win these two games in the Bronx. Because if you lose one of these games, you're either out of, 
you're out of the game, you're out of the series completely, or you're down three two going into Houston and have to win both games. So the Yankees need to do everything in their power to win these two. These are these are two must win games for Houston, or, or for New York, and then the next two are must win games for Houston and New York. Yeah, and like the thing is, the Astros now have the option: Are we gonna, you know? Go with what the Yankees are doing and try to, you know, match what they do by putting Granky with Tanaka um, to try to, you know, balance it a little bit. Or are we just going to beat to our own drum, do what we're doing, and not worry about our opponent? But I also think with a two-one lead, you've won yourself the freedom to do whatever you want, and you don't necessarily have to do what the other team decides to do. Because also, like the Yankees, they could decide. Hey, let's save Tanaka for Game Five. I mean, I wouldn't. I think that they're going to use Tanaka on Thursday, yeah. regardless. And I think they're telling Tanaka, like, you know, you're pitching Thursday. I don't care what game it is. I don't care what number. It could be Game Four, Five, or One Thousand Two Hundred and Seventy-Eight. You're pitching on Thursday. So, I, I mean, what do you guys think about what I just said? I think they're key. Oh, oh, you, you can go. Sorry. Yeah. I kind of agree. Like, you know, um, the Astros are kind of not as stressed going into this Game Four, like. Their, their wins need to come in those ending games. So this is all, like, the Yankees, the stress lies with them. They need to make sure that they win this game because if not, it could really just deter the whole thing for them and, and potentially ruin the series for them. So, yeah, I agree that Tanaka should be their starting pitcher going into game four because, I mean, if, especially if they're putting Greinke in, like, at the Astros, and he they need someone that can compete with that. Johnny. Urquidy also isn't a bad pitcher. No, he's not. He's a pretty good pitcher. He gives them a good shot to win. And especially, like if you said, if they open with Chad Green, that's it's going to be interesting. Because also the thing, the thing with the Yankees, too, it's like if you decide to go Tanaka on a Thursday game four, you go Paxton game five on Friday, um, and then, well, he's also on one day less rest, but also he didn't pitch as much as uh, he didn't pitch as much as Verlander in game two. And then Severino in game six. Who do you pitch game seven? Chad Green? I mean, I would assume... Look, Chad Green is going to have to start one game in this series. Yeah. And look, I think the Yankees would be okay with starting anyone in game seven because, hey, we're at least at game seven. I mean, like, it, Their chances of getting to game seven are not as likely as the Astros' chances are. Yeah. It could be beneficial, though, to save Chad Green, though, for the end because, you know, they don't have as talented of a bullpen as... um the Astros have so you know use Tanaka in game four and then maybe save Chad Green for later yeah I mean I I mean look the Yankees bullpen is superior to the Astros bullpen I'm not afraid to say that and I think it's I think it's a true statement they have much more they have more reliable arms in that bullpen than the Astros do the Astros probably have you know the Astros have maybe I would say like one and a half to two Reliable arms. Ryan, 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 at least Ryan, Ryan Presley. Presley is not as effective as I thought he would be. But Joe Smith has. Yeah. Um, Joe Smith, I would consider him like a half arm. Do you half think re- that half a reliable arm? Not having a lefty pitcher in general hurts them in the series. You know, I thought it. I thought it might, but there aren't any like there aren't any matchups that have come into play yet that have really you know, truly affected that, that, oh, it'd be real nice to have a lefty here. And I think that's what the Astros decided to do. Because the thing is, they they don't have lefty pitchers at all. They have Wade Miley, and that was it. And that's all they were carrying the whole year, really. They didn't really have too many lefties. They had this one guy in double A um, that would always, that would come up once in a while. But um, that was like a situational lefty, but he'd only come in if the Astros were up by six, seven, eight runs or down six, seven or eight runs. Um, but not a pitcher you would use in the postseason in any, by any means. Um, Sionel Perez is who I'm referring to, but, um, I, I think it hasn't like AJ Hinch picked the 12 best pitchers and that's what he was going off. He didn't care if they threw left, right, or middle, like he was just totally, um, he just picked the 12 best pitchers. And I think that's what you see on the roster right now is, um, but also he's only really using like six or seven of them. It's not yeah. like the Yankees where the Yankees, I want to say every single pitcher, except for maybe Tyler Lyons has come into play. And it's because in game two, they had to use all those pitchers. And that's something that the Astros had the luxury of not having to do at least yet. Um, and that that's what worries me for the Yankees, at least in a potential game seven is if you do decide to bump your rotation up a little bit and you go um, and you go Tanaka four, Paxton five, Sevy six, 
Uh, you're also pitching Severino on short rest. And Severino pitched a lot yesterday. He pitched almost 100 pitches, and he would be only given, you know, three days rest if he were to pitch game six. So, um, I mean, the Yankees might not necessarily have a choice because game six for them could very possibly be an elimination game. Um, and they they won't necessarily have a better option. Maybe they decide to go Chad Green in game six, save Seve for game seven if they're up three to two. Um, that's something that where the Yankees can gain leverage again. But it's, that's the last chance that the Yankees will have to gain leverage because that's the one time they can take a lead in this series before it's over is they can go up 3-2 before uh, game six. I have a question for you. Do you think yeah. that Severino might have been tipping his off speed the other day? Because the Astros did not look phased by anything he was throwing. The, uh, You know, I, I'm i going to be honest. I didn't watch a whole lot of the beginning of that game because yeah. of work. Um, but when I came in, you know, when I was able to fully watch and, you know, digest the broadcast, he was on his final pitches. And the thing about Severino is they've seen a lot of him. I don't know. Like, it's just like, it always feels like every time the Astros face the Yankees, Severino's involved somehow, even though he's been injured for a while, they, for somehow, for some, some odd reason, just match up really well with Severino. And they also match up really well with James Paxton because they, James Paxton years with the Mariners has, they've seen James Paxton a lot more often than Tanaka or, you know, any, any other of the Yankee pitchers, but Severino is just someone they match up really well against. Um, and you saw that yesterday, Josh Reddick was hitting home runs. Like, like that, that was part of the, that was part of the reason, like Josh Reddick's run ended up being the quote unquote game winning runs, the second run and the Yankees didn't get two runs. So yeah. it was a very important run that they were just able to, the, the game planned really well for him. And that, that's, I want to say this, the Astros coaching staff is one of the smartest in the league. It's one of the smartest, um, you know, AJ Hinch is one of the brightest baseball minds underrated. Let me add. And then Brett Strom has changed careers with his, um, you know, he's revived Justin Verlander's career. He's given Garrett Cole a side. He's turned Garrett Cole from an ace to a Cy Young candidate to a $300 million man. Um, Alex Cora was the bench coach. Then he ended up winning a World Series the following year with the Red Sox. The Astros have a really smart um, coaching staff, and that's a a big reason why they are in the position they are in now. You can do so much with talent, but when you use talent correctly is when you actually get somewhere. And that's what the Astros are doing. I just love that they could probably pick some 12-year-old kid up off the street and teach him to throw 100 miles an hour and have the best curveball in the league. I mean, <laughs> I mean, hey, hey, that's what, that's what happens. Aaron Sanchez in his first start with them yeah. through six innings of a combined no-hitter. It's a shame that Aaron Sanchez is not able to play yeah. in this series. But I think he'll be a big part of the team next year, especially with uh, Garrett Cole likely not being on the team. Um, they'll have Aaron Sanchez, Zach Granke, Verlander, Lance McCullers is probably going to come back. I love him. I love um, him on Twitter. Great Twitter. Great, great follow. Shout out to Lance McCullers. I uh, hope you're uh, recovering very nicely. But, yeah. He threw a flat ground the other day. Okay. He did? Yeah. He used to curveballs. Okay. That's good. That, that makes me feel good. He'll be ready for uh, spring training. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, but I do want to ask you guys uh, one final question uh, before we sign off here. Um, uh, or I'll... It's a quiz. It's a quiz. It's several questions, actually. <laughs> um, one, it, when is Game 4 played? Two, who wins the ALCS? Three, who wins the World Series? Kayla, we'll start with you. Oh, gosh. Um, I don't know about when Game 4 will be. That it, That's just yeah. I'm asking. I'm, I'm literally asking to predict the weather. Oh, okay. So um, yeah. <laughs> let me just think about it for a second. Definitely tomorrow. Okay. Um, Actually, I would. I think it'd be more fun if it got pushed till tomorrow. I don't know. It Make would it, add. It would add a little bit of mystery. And exactly. Suspense yeah. And Make things drama. a little more interesting for oh, sure. Yeah. Um, as far as winning the ALCS, that's what, I've been like back and forth. Like I'm like Yankees, Astros, Yankees, Astros. But honestly, I could see the Yankees. Like they've been. You know, they they've come so close every year. I think they're it's they're finally their their season to do it. And in the World Series, I hope it's the Nationals. You know, I think. I think they could do it. I mean, they're they're working together like they haven't before. You know what I mean? They're at the top of their game. They're they're ready. They're eager. You know, they're trying to get that first World Series into Washington. So, we'll see. Johnny, 
I think the rain is going to pull a Florida weather in that it's going to rain for about 10 minutes really hard and that it's not going to rain again, but they're going to cancel the game anyways. I mean, that's part of like why they've been – like they don't want to have a rain delay because then you have to – it's more broadcasting fees, more all of that, and they don't want that. Yeah. So they're, they're, that's why they've been monitoring this for days now and they're looking – I think the game goes through today though. I want the game to go through today, keep it on like the normal schedule. Just because I think it'll be more yeah. fun. And then I get to watch more baseball tonight. Yeah, because, I mean, if they don't play, there's no baseball tonight. Because yeah. no game five. Yeah. That, that, that's certainly not happening. No. Baseball <laughs> is my only way that I can procrastinate on doing my homework. So I need mm-hmm. that. Okay. So who wins? Who wins the series? I think the Astros. I just think they've got it. They're, just, they're so fun to watch. Like, Carlos Correa is a must-watch at bat for anybody. He's definitely picked up lately. Yeah, he's he's always been a must-watch at bat. It just sucks that he's been kind of banged out the past couple of years and hasn't played as many games as one would like to see him do. But yeah, for the World Series, God, I want Juan Soto to get a ring. You want Juan? So I mean, you want, but what you want isn't necessarily what's going to happen. I so I, th- I think we're gonna have to pick the Nationals. I think their rotation is deeper and overall better than the Astros. Their bullpen might not be as locked down, but I think those four starters going deep into ball games, limiting runs, always giving them a chance into at least the seventh or eighth inning every single game is what's going to be the difference maker. I will say this is this. Look, I think if the Astros have had to face the best pitching in the league in the Rays, I truly believe top to bottom the Rays are the best pitching staff in the league. And they, they were able to overcome that. Barely, but they were able to do it. Um, I think the Astros are a better matchup for the Nationals than the, the than the Yankees are. Um, but I will say that I think whoever comes out of the American League is going to win. I, I truly think that, and, and maybe. But I will say this: I think it will be a much closer series if 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 the Astros come out. I think I actually think I think. But also, you look at the Yankees. If the Yankees actually come out of this series against the Astros, the you know the coming back from look, they're going to have to win either Game Six or Game Seven, if not both, in Houston. How are you going to say, oh, you know, congrats, you beat the best team in the league, 107 win Astros, but you can't beat the Wild Card Nationals? I just I have a hard time seeing the American League not beat the Nationals. I mean, the playoffs are all about who's hot. It's it is. It's You're right. Hot for eleven games, and, and the Astros have been hot. And the, and look, the Yankees, the Yankees are going to ride to momentum. And there, it. The, what I love about this right, this right now is, despite despite how many really good teams there were, it's still really unpredictable. It is really anyone's game at this point. Uh, you you can make an argument for the Nationals. You can make an argument for the Astros. You can make an argument for the Yankees. Yeah. I, I'd be um, disappointing, and I'd be disappointing my whole family line in Houston <laughs> if I did not say the Astros. But um, I just like that it's not 2018, and the Dodgers won the National League, but they there was no shot they were going to no, beat the Red yeah. Sox. There were three yeah. or four teams who could have beat the Dodgers in the World Series last year on the American League side. Look, I said this um, at the beginning of the at, at, on our on our HTF MLB playoff preview. I said. Give me an argument that any team will beat a team with Cole and Verlander, you know, four times. How 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 do you beat? How can anyone beat the Astros four times? It has yet to be done, and I and I still have a hard time uh, seeing it. So, at this point, until someone can prove to me that the Astros can be beat four times in a seven game span, then I'm I have to keep going with the Astros. So. It's a little bit of bias there. It, I mean, it's a little bit. It's a little bit. Of okay, bias. but come up with an argument then. Oh no, they're no, insane. I mean, yeah, okay, you're so look, there is, and look, the Rays may... did beat Verlander though, and then you really only have to beat Granky and Arkady. I mean, but the thing is, Garrett Cole and Verlander pitch four of the seven games. Yeah. You have to beat one of them. I mean, the Astros. That's not bias. That's yeah. math. Yeah. yeah, that's basic math. The Astros have two of the best pitchers in the MLB right now. I mean, like you know, it's kind of hard to. Hard to say they won't put up a good fight and possibly win the whole thing. I think we have a lot of baseball left to be played. I can't wait to talk to you guys again about this soon. Thank you so much for tuning in. Johnny Jackson on my far left. 
Caleb Burge in the middle, and Jeremy Brenner on the far right. Uh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the HTF Podcast. We'll be back next week for our NBA preview podcast. Um, should be very, very exciting. We have all NBA content next week on Hitting the Field. Um, we have our HTF preview show for the NBA season, a special one-hour edition. I will be hosting and having a record eight panelists on the show. Um, I think it ties the record set back in uh, season five or six. I, we did we did an episode where I think we had like we had like it was like around the horn, but with teams. That was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, I don't think I was on that episode, though. Like, we, we literally, like, picked names out of a hat to determine who would be with who. Really? Yeah. It was, it was a fun time. Um, but this time, we're going to be talking all things NBA from L.A. to New York to Miami to China, maybe. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> maybe maybe not China. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll save that for another time. But, uh... Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Things gon' change when I really hit the field. Undefeated chance, man, you know what's the deal. Tryna find a kid, I'm in a field doing drills. Boy, you just a sucker, you ain't never keep it real. Do rings in my hand, I'm a warrior to the max. When I hang it up, they gon' have to give me plaques. Step up in the building, and I only bring the facts. When I make a highlight, they gon' replay running. Always locked in, now I got time to lag. Saying he the best, he could take a lap. Batting 1,000 when you check the stats. Boy, is you ready? You ain't gotta ask. I just really hit the bell. 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 Boy, I'm about to hit the bell. Boy, I'm about to hit the bell.